Bible. You live by the word of God. The word of God has a way of giving you compass to navigate your way. If you want the knowledge of God in your life, if you want to increase and grow and multiply the knowledge of God's word in your life, spend time in his word. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Today I'd like to look um, to, we look at it from the context of family, the family blessing, but I want us to see it on a broader scope um, as it applies to the believer. I want to look into what we call the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord. When we talk about the blessing of the Lord, we should not immediately begin to think of money. To the uncircumcised, it looks like that's it. But we've shown us from time to time, place to place, how the Lord blessed people, and it wasn't measured by material substance the blessing of the lord should not always be measured on the platform of the material I'll explain to us to start with that the blessing of the lord is a divine invocation god speaking over a person man or woman so that the person can do well so the blessing of the lord is a divine invocation to do well it's a divine enabling so that the light of God, and when we talk about light here, it's not physical light, it's spiritual light, so that the light of God may shine upon a person and upon his or her fears. When the light of God shines on your life, on your fears, on your path, you create an enabling environment for God to operate freely, for the resources of heaven to flow freely, for the forces of God to be easily activated into operation. We've highlighted um, in recent teachings from Colossians chapter 1, I think it's verse 12 or verse 13, where it talks about the, that we are partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So when we talk about the blessing, the blessing of the Lord is that divine enabling for the light of God to shine on a person and on his affairs. The Bible tells us about Jesus, when you read it from John chapter 1 and verse 5, he said, in him was life and the life became the light of men, illumination for human beings and this light shines in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it. This light shines in darkness and darkness, the darkness which is an enabling environment for demonic forces to operate, uh, bad things to operate, uh, satanic agents to operate, causes to operate. Causes find an enabling environment to operate in a person's life where there is darkness, where the light of God is not shining. When the light of God shines, you become a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in the light. No matter how forceful and powerful the devil is, his operations and might are enabled in an environment of darkness where the light of God is not shining. Where light for a child of God can come in the form of understanding. He said, your word is a lamp to my feet, is a light to my path. So light for a believer can come in the form of understanding. 
understandest thou what thou readest and the king james um, the, the uh, um, um philip the evangelist who was initially ordained as a deacon met that ethiopian eunuch and asked that question life transforming question turning point question do you understand what you are reading he said how can i understand except a man take me through so he was reading but he was in darkness he could not find his way through he could not navigate his way through until by the explanation of philip light from heaven shone on his path and the moment light shone bright enough he said what forbids me this is water <laughs> what forbids me from being baptized because he came to realize that one of the things that come with salvation in christ jesus is spiritual baptism as well as water baptism symbolic of repentance he said this water does anything forbid me from being baptized and philip told him if you believe then you can be baptized so the blessing the blessing of the lord is divine and is divine enabling for a man to do well for the light of god and thereby the resources of god to come freely into a man's affairs is the kind of blessing joseph enjoyed in potiphar's household his status had been changed from a high level in his father's house his father was a wealthy man his father was an affluent man affluent and influential by one moment favorite son became a slave he had been sold into slavery he found himself in, in the camp of the ishmaelites who had bought him and then again they sold him again the, the ishmaelites bought him from his brothers who sold him out of jealousy and envy and then the ishmaelites carried him from that waterless pit and took him to egypt and sold him again to potiphar the captain of the guard is like um uh, uh, um uh, the captain of the guard of um pharaoh's army hello friends i want to recommend this book it's a powerful book that just came off the press authored by us um, grace exploring his riches basically brings understanding of god's purpose for grace and the channels through which god makes grace available to human beings the ultimate expression of grace as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of god this one will bless you grace exploring his riches i challenge you check the tv screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read study ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. And so the captain took him to his house, put him in charge of his affairs. And when you study that passage, Genesis chapter 39, let's read that from verse 1 to verse 5. Genesis chapter 39, as we get on here. He says, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. Uh, some translations like King James says, he was a prosperous man, meaning he was doing well. <laughs> doing well because the light of heaven was shining on him. Look at this here. The Lord was with Joseph. So that's an environment of light, divine enabling. He said, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And the master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer over his house and over all that he put um, under his authority. So it was from the time that he made him overseer over his house that, and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian for Joseph's sake. And we explained to us a week ago that a person can be blessed by, blessed by association by proxy so because he was associated because uh, potiphar was associated with a blessed man even though socially he was a slave but spiritually he was a blessed man he carried the blessing of the lord and that began to began to affect the business and the things in the household of potiphar but let's jump let me read that conclusively and then we'll jump to some latter verses he said that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field let's jump joseph stood for righteousness it landed him in prison he would not sleep with his master's wife it landed him in prison 
But even in prison, look at this. From verse 20. Then Joseph's master took him and put him in, into the prison. A place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. Divine presence. And showed him mercy. And gave him favor in the sight of, all the, keep, in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they, um, they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. The Lord made it turn out well. In Potiphar's house, did Joseph make money? Question. I want answers. In Potiphar's house, did Joseph make money for himself? Did he become a rich man? But was he a blessed man? Yeah, so I'm trying to make you understand something there. And then again here in prison, was Joseph, did he become a rich man? Did he have material resources in prison? But he was a blessed man. So the blessing of the Lord should not be restricted to material terms. But you have unusual intelligence. I mean, by the hand of God upon your life can be a manifestation of the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is that enabling for the light of God, thereby the resource of God shining on your path. That what others do and they are queried, they are questioned, they are sad. You do it not once, not twice, not three times. And your boss is busy explaining away your situation on your behalf in the board meeting. It's not by chance. <laughs> So, th those are the manifestations of the blessing. That is what the blessing can do in the life of, of a person. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22, in verse 22. He said, the blessing of the Lord, it, it makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. And the riches that is still not mat just material. You, you, you can be rich in wisdom. You can be rich mentally. You can be rich financially. You can be rich materially. You can be rich socially. Everywhere you turn, people just take a liking to you. Everywhere you turn, it's like people have known you for years. Even where they meet you for the first time, they are eager to do you good. The blessing of the Lord. A divine enabling to succeed. A, the, a divine invocation to fear well. That anywhere you turn, light is shining on your path. Light is shining on your fortunes. People just want the best for you. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so the blessing of the Lord is also a divine enabling for a person to conduct his affairs in the light. And light in this context is spiritual light. In him was, in him was life and the light became the light of men and this light shines in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it. When you carry the blessing of the Lord in your life, it will manifest in various forms. Wherever you go, it should not be restricted to a geographical location. It should work for you anywhere you go. Because if God cannot be restricted by geography, then his blessing on your life should not be restricted by geography. It should not be a culturally relevant, a culturally viable virtue. No. Irrespective of location, irrespective of geography, irrespective of function, irrespective of environment, irrespective of what surrounds you. Remember when we were explaining about the blessing? We said a blessed man can manifest the blessing even in a caused environment. Hello friends, I want to recommend this. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions, and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. By the blessing of the Lord upon Joseph, he made Egypt to outlast famine by the hand of God on one man. Okay. So that's the blessing. 
But then I want to quickly also bring to attention here the purpose of the blessing. Why would God want his blessing to rest on a man? He made it to rest in a dimension on the first family, Adam and Eve. The Bible says he made them, he created them, and then he blessed them by saying to them. That was the invocation for them to fear well. And we explained on three dimensions. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Capacity to bring forth, capacity to increase what you bring forth, capacity to replace what you bring forth that is exhausted. Fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And what's the purpose of the blessing of the Lord? Why will God place his blessing upon a man, upon a family, upon a community, upon a nation? Why will God say of all the nations of the earth, Israel, you alone have I known? Why will God tell the nation of Israel, if you diligently observe to do my words and diligently hearken to my voice, I will bless you in every way in, in the midst of all the nations. I will bless you going out. I will bless you coming in. What is the purpose of the blessing? You want to be blessed spiritually, you want to be blessed socially, you want to be blessed by the Lord, manifesting your finances, blessed by the Lord, manifesting in your social advantage. What is, what is God's mind? If we will understand the purpose for the blessing, we need to recognize it is not a human purpose. You might have asked for it, I will come to that in a moment, or God sovereignly brought the terms to you, I want to bless you. But these are the terms of the blessing. These are the terms and conditions that apply you know when you want to get some things you want to get some tickets and then they tell you terms and conditions apply likewise the blessing of the lord i will come to that in a moment but what's the purpose the purpose of the blessing of the lord when it comes upon a man manifesting in any form is so that that man may represent god enabled by god to fulfill God's plan on that man's life. That God's plan for that man's life. So if the blessing of the Lord is manifesting in your, in, in your life, for example, financially, God has a purpose for it, that you may represent him in that field. If the blessing of the Lord is manifesting in your life and every, everywhere you go, everywhere you turn, you do well, you prosper, God has a purpose for it. It is so that you represent him. In the areas where that blessing is manifesting, God does not bless us so that we show off. God does not bless us so that we brag about it. God does not bless any man. Maybe he has blessed you with beauty. Maybe he has blessed you with finances. Maybe he has blessed you with soundness in your health. Maybe he has blessed you with unusual insight. You teach the senators of Egypt wisdom like Joseph. It was not for Joseph to brag. In fact, one of the things that delayed divine gratification in Joseph's life was his ability to brag. Any little thing, he would brag about it. God shows him visions, he would brag about it. God reveals dreams to him, he will brag about it. And then his brothers will say, are you talking about us? Then he will tell them another one with a mind to brag. So when God blesses you, other people can bless you. We need to understand that. But if it's the blessing of the Lord, he has a mind that you represent him. You carry that blessing with a sense of responsibility. A sense of divine responsibility. God has, does not place his blessing upon you so that you brag about it. So that you show off about it. So that you go to the rooftop and, and shout for everyone to, who cares to listen to see what God has placed upon your life. It's not about you. It's never about us. It's about the Lord. So when God blesses a man, he should carry it with humility. That's why he says he gives more grace. And I've explained to us a, a, an expression of the grace of God, especially in the Old Testament, is the blessing of the Lord. It is still, grace is divine enabling. Uh, blessing is divine enabling. All right. So when God blesses you, you need to be humble about it. You see again and again in scriptures, it says he gives more grace. He said, he said it in Proverbs chapter 3. He said it in James. He said it in First Peter chapter 5. He gives more grace to the humble. When you lowly esteem yourself, you make yourself nothing in his sight, then he gives you the ability to stand tall to represent him. The blessing of the Lord is never about us. It's not for us to represent our selfish interest. It's to represent the Lord. Praise God. So if God has made you rich financially, it's so that you represent him in certain things he wants to carry out through you. 
If God has made you unusually uh, uh, intelligent and bless you with unusual intellectual strength and might, it is so that you represent him, not even yourself, with regard to a plan with you in mind. He taught the senate, Joseph taught the senators of Egypt wisdom, but that was after he had become humble. If you take time to study Joseph's trajectory, starting out in life, he was a very uh, 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 high-minded guy. Didn't treat his brothers fairly enough. And I'm sure it's one of the reasons why God had to stretch him over those 13 years from 17 when he had a dream to the several years he spent in Potiphar's house to the several additional years he spent in prison. He, at a stage, he was saying, look, uh, what, I'm not here because of anything I did, bad I did, though. Remember me when you get before Pharaoh. God kept him there still. Because if this guy gets out, he will still brag. Until when they sent for him, we learned you can interpret Pharaoh's dream. He said, it is not in me. Oh. I've spent 13 long years in this obscurity. Don't add to it. Oh. Sometimes God delays some promises he has spoken to our lives, spoken over our lives, because he wants to take the glory. Sometimes we get in the way. We think it's about us. We think the intellect is about us. We think the wealth is about us. We think the might is about us. Purpose for divine blessing to represent God in God's plan. Hello, friends. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Explains His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you. Grace Explains His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Praise God. What a time in God's word today. I'm sure you've been blessed. Your heart has been ignited as you listen to that broadcast today. But I'd like to challenge you beyond being a casual listener, a passive Christian, I want you to become a passionate follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, think on these words you've heard today, and take them to heart, search the scriptures if these things are so, and live by them, and live for Jesus. God is looking for vehicles. God is looking for vessels. He can fill him with himself, and demonstrate himself, and release his glory upon the earth today. But will he find you? If God can find you and use you, he will use you to do some things on the face of the earth. He will first of all transform you and then use you to transform a generation, transform the society. I want to challenge you, dear friend and brother and sister, let us live by these words. Let us raise a new generation for our Lord on the face of the earth and the Lord will be pleased thereby. Until another broadcast, remember Jesus, the son of the living God, is coming back again. May we see him, may we follow him, may we worship and serve him. God bless you. Amen.